This is lesson 12.3, which is permutations and combinations. Our essential question is how are permutations and combinations useful when fighting probabilities? So our first example is the fundamental counting principle. So it says Manuel wants to ad advertise the number of one topping pizzas he offers to his customers. How many different one topping pizzas are available at Manuel's pizzeria? So you can see that there are two sizes, there are two crust options, and then there are three topping choices. So if we want to use the fundamental counting principle, it's that we just multiply those options together. So we would say two times two times three, and we would get a total of 12 possible pizzas. Okay, example two is talking about permutations. So as we talk about these, um, permutations are situations where order matters. So it's kind of funny because like a locker combination is actually a permutation, not a combination. So um, this lesson talks about permutations and combinations. Permutations, order matters. So if you had a locker combination of 30, 25, 7, and you put it in 7, 30, 25, it's not going to open your locker. So that's what makes it a permutation. So A says Gabriella is making a playlist with her three favorite songs. How many possible orders are there for those songs? So we could write out all the possibilities, but if she was making a playlist with 30 of her favorite songs, we're not going to want to write out all the possibilities. So what we can do is we can think of, okay, we have the first song, we have the second song, and we have the third song. So if I'm placing these in order matters, there are three different songs I could choose to place in that first spot. Then because one of them will already be taken up with the first spot, if I go to the second spot, there's only two, two choices left. And then if I've placed the first song and then the second song, then there's only one, one song left to put in that third choice. So we can multiply these together. And another way of writing this is three factorial. So there's a factorial and exclamation point button on your calculator. Um, but three factorial is just taking any number factorial is taking that number, multiplying it by every number below it. So this would be six total possible orders for the songs. Okay. So now the second one says Gabriella wants to make another playlist with five of her favorite artists, eight most popular songs. How many different playlists are possible? So the notation for this is we would say 8P5. So we have eight in the, like the group that we're picking from, and we're only picking five of them. So we could do it this way. We could say, okay, we know there's eight choices, seven six, five, four. So we can multiply those numbers together. So that's the five song slots and I have eight to choose from and so on down. So that would give me 6,720. Or there is a formula. So the formula says we would take eight factorial and divide it by eight minus five factorial or that would be eight, oops, eight factorial over three factorial. And we would also get 6,720. So this is the formula that we just wrote down. So for permutations, um, we can calculate if we have a, if we're not just taking, um, like the first example where we're not just taking the factorial of that number. So not all the things have a, have, we're not multiplying all the way down to zero. Not everything is chosen out of the group. Then we would use this formula. Okay, the next example is talking about combinations. So combinations, order doesn't matter. Okay. So Marisol is planning to be a counselor at a summer camp. She can choose three activities for her session. 
how many different combinations of three activities are possible. So this is where order doesn't matter. So if we pick archery, climbing, and cooking, it, it's the same options as climbing, archery, and cooking. So the, the order of the three doesn't matter. That's what makes it a combination. So what we're doing on this one is we're saying, so there are 10 total possibilities for activities. So this would be 10C3. Instead of P for permutation, C for combination. So the combination formula, we would take 10 factorial on the top, and then the denominator is the part that's different. We would take our R factorial, which is 3 times 10 minus 3 factorial. Or this would be 10 factorial over 3 factorial, 7 factorial. So if we did that, type that in the calculator, we will get 120 possible combinations. So because order doesn't matter, if you're comparing the same thing, like if you were to compare um, the number of combinations of three out of this group versus the number of permutations of three out of this group, you're going to have a lot more permutations than you would combinations. So finally, this is just summarizing what we just talked about. Here is our formula for combinations. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.